Come and leave it there. I was down with the no way up, and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free. I tried it for myself and now I know what he did for me. We serve a great God, we serve a matchless God. We serve an awesome King Lord today. Hallelujah to God, we support y'all today. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Our God is big and we run to declare.
Those of you that were tuned in last week, that tuned in last week, thank you, thank you, thank you for the feedback and the comments because that message, Bring the Noise, was a message that talked about how we have a top of faith. And now, this week, we're going to do part two of this revelatory message. So I want you to go to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. Um, have you ever been in the place, Joshua chapter 6, turn there as I'm talking. Have you ever been in the place where it seems that you were fighting, but you were not progressing? Have you ever been in the place where the things that were attacking you seemed like they were winning, although you were praying and praising, and you've done everything you needed to do? Well, today... I'm going to show you the ultimate weapon, what God gave us, how we can make sure that in every situation, we'll be able to get through. That's right. Come on, go with me. Joshua chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Now Jericho, I'm reading King James, was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. All right, so you know where we're starting. You know where I am. I'm going to be talking about the walls of Jericho. But what you need to understand is there was a whole lot more to that story than what we learned in Sunday school. So just hear what I'm saying. None went in, and none came, none came out, and none went in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of thou, and you shall compass the city. All ye men of war, and go around about the city once, thou shalt do that for six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast on the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, get ready, here it is, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. So praise God. That's all we're going to read right now. Go be in a word of prayer, because i got to quickly get to this. It, it's bursting on the inside of me. Father God, I thank you today for everyone that's here. Today, God, we're going to tear down some spiritual walls. We're going to tear down some obstacles. We're going to put somebody back in the driver's seat of their salvation. We're going to have them to understand what Jesus won for them on the cross so they can get stronger. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, Lord, bring back to my remembrance everything, Lord. I can't preach this without you. Please come now, God. Bring your word forth in my heart and in my mind. In Jesus' name, amen. This is uh, part two of the message. Well, here it is. Bring the noise, part two. Praise fighting. How to be a praise fighter. We, you know, uh, when I was doing this and when the Lord placed that in my spirit, I heard the word praise fighting and I thought about prize fighting. But praise fighting is totally different. Prize fighting is for is two professional fighters who get into the ring to fight for money. Praise fighting has much more at stake. And when you get a hold of this, you're going to find out all of us can do it. This is part two of the revelatory message that we got last week that God expects us and has given us the ability to have unstoppable faith. Nobody out there should stop. Nobody out there, if you are on a pause or if you stop right now, that does not mean you're done. It does not mean you're finished because God gave us the ability to have unstoppable faith, to have a faith, not weak faith, uh, not little faith, uh, not uh, doubting faith, uh, but great faith. When we saw the text that we read last week, we found out that God said we can have great faith. And let me tell you, great faith is in your heart. And great faith, no matter who you are, comes from your trusting in God. Because you need to know that the God we serve, his plan of redemption was not some spur of the moment plan that God thought of. No, no, you need to understand the foundation you're built on. It was not some spur of the moment plan that, you know, some wishy-washy God that said, I'm going to send down now, you know, a plan to save my people. That's not what it was. 
God's plan was a plan that was birthed in the heart of an omnipotent God, of, of a God who just can bring forth by the words of his mouth, a God in heaven who's been reigning from eternity. So when God sent the plan of redemption, he put a plan in place that we could put our faith in, and our faith in the finished and redeemed word of Jesus Christ will never let us down. Did you hear what I said? Your faith will never let you down. If our faith lets us down, it means we got to get back to the drawing board because God has so much more. This plan that God gave us was sealed in the blood of his own son. Come on, that's faith. We have sealed in the blood of his own son. We have established, therefore, that we weren't there, that the term, terminology, bring the noise. We have established that it means that it's a believer who says, I won't be stopped. I can't be stopped. Nothing you try to do, and no matter how much you pull on me, I'll never turn my back on a God who has brought me this far and blessed me. Did you see that? Unstoppable faith is not like, you know, this great thing. What it really is is that I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I said I believe in God. Do you believe in it? If you said you believe in God, then believe in God. Don't keep wavering back and forth. So this unstoppable faith, when you talk about bringing the noise, was a blessing. And therefore, we know that no matter what happens, God is going to bless us. This kind of faith is based on the fact that God has enough power to keep me through anything. I got some witnesses out there. If you would go back in the resources of your mind, how many of us know that God has enough power to keep me through anything. All of us have heard remarkable power. Listen to me. Don't give up. Don't turn this off. Listen. God said there's nothing out there impossible for him. He's done some things in our life that you just haven't dreamed of because you got to learn how to be a praise fighter. You got to learn how to take your praise and make it a weapon because what happens to the world is they go out and put their faith in everything else and sometimes we have saints of God who are walking around with this uh, dual personality. They're walking around with heaven and faith in God and heaven in the world and you're walking around scared. I don't understand it. You're walking around tentative. You're walking around timidly. And God is saying, no, if you would stand up and trust me, I have the power to bring you through. I'm going to take you to a revelation today that I think will bless you because it is possible for God to teach us how to lean on his faith so nothing is impossible with us. You cannot make this journey without God. How do I know that? Look at all the insecure people who try to make this journey with money, try to make this, this journey with fame, try to make this money, this journey with fortune, try to make all of us are out there, try to make this journey with our, with our drug habit, with our drinking, with our sex, whatever we tried to do, it just did not work. And Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 2 tells us why it did not work. He said, vanity of vanities, all is vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Solomon, the preacher, of, or Ecclesiastes, is about Solomon, the preacher. And Solomon said, with all of my wisdom, watch this, I took all of my knowledge to try to pursue the things of the world I thought were good according to the world's description. I had money, I had women, I had possessions, I had anything I want, and I found out that it was all vanity. Listen to me. The word vanity in the NIV says meaningless, meaningless. All is meaningless. If we go into the good news interpretation, it says um, it is empty, empty. All is empty. There is nothing out there but emptiness if you don't put your trust in God. That is why this text is so important. Here's why. I'm hitting, I'm hitting ready to This is what you tuned in for. This is what you're going to get today. Watch this. There is one thing certain why this text with Joshua and the walls of Jer Jericho affect us all. Here it is. It is because there's one thing I know for certain. There is a battle around the corner for you. There's a, there's a fight 
waiting on you. If you're alive for any sign of, any amount of time, there's a fight and a battle that you're going to have to fight. You better listen to me because I can tell you right now, somebody can testify, we can touch. I know you're in your home or, or you're in your sanctuary and we're in this sanctuary, but if somebody could touch and agree with you, they would tell you, I know that's right because I'm battling right now. And don't ever think that preachers or any of us who are walking are exempt from these battles. But the reality is there is a battle that is coming your way. Don't you dare stay in the condition you're in where God said, I'm going to teach you how to be a person who can fight or use the ultimate weapon of praise as your weapon of choice for the darkest times in your life. So a battle is coming your way and you're going to need to learn. I'm watching somebody right now. I, but see, here's what you need to understand. We're not talking about, and Joshua is not talking about empty praise, like uh, shouting for the sake of shouting, or praising for the sake of praising. Somebody just said, oh, praise the Lord, and we jump all over, but we haven't put any kind of heart or motive into what we were doing and why we were praising Him. You know, when you get down and, and you get beaten, when you say praise the Lord, it's like there's an anointing that comes out of the pit. You know what I'm talking about. Tears coming down your face. It's like you're holding on to God with all you have. That's the place you need to be in because if you're not a praiser, you will never reach the area that God is trying to show us where he is living and that is the area of praise. So we found out that bring the noise, right, on top of faith, now takes us to a place where we got our blessings, Last week we found out bring the noise, unstoppable faith, takes us to our blessing. But bring the noise, praise fighting, takes us how to hold on to and keep the blessings and get to our destiny. I just said something. Some of you, God has made so many things in your life that you have not kept. And you don't know how to keep them, so you keep going in this revolving circle because you don't know how to keep what God has. And I'm going to show you how Joshua was able to take this, 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 uh, this gift God gave us of worship and praise and use it so that we could get to the place to claim our destiny. I want to teach you how to be a praise fighter. May it sound funny, somebody said, I know how to know. This is what I'm saying. This is an organized praise that God ordained for you to use to fight what's ever facing you now. That's what a real praise fighter is. Many of us have gotten so used to, matter of fact, we mess praise up. The church has. We turn praise, we, we compartmentalize praise in the church. All of us now have praise and worship teams, right? Because we made praise part of our service. So there's praise and worship, and then the offering, and then the word, and maybe some announcements thrown in between. But we don't think praise and worship is any different than anything else. But every time you set up a praise to God, it is uh, something that delights the very heart of God and turns his attention toward you. Praise is not ordinary. We waste praise the way that we do it in church. You need to understand something. Psalms 22 and 3. God talks about praise hundreds of times in the, in the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, how he used praise to preserve his people, to protect his people, to guide his people, and to send them into a place that they could tap into, an anointing that they could not tap into without his praise. We are just ordinary without learning that praise comes from that inner man, touches God, takes us to a place out of the sanctuary, out of body experience, and no demon in hell can stop us once we praise. Psalms 22 and 3 says it this way. Uh, you are holy, watch this, uh, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. Psalms 22 and 3, we say it like this. God inhabits the praises of his people. Don't miss that. You're sitting in one seat. They're sitting in one seat. Maybe you're on the couch. Maybe you're on the slow seat. I don't know where you are. In church or in the back or you're in front. Do you know the one who God shows up to? Doesn't make a difference whether you're in your car, you're in the supermarket, whether you're in the hospital. I've been in the hospital. I will tell you, if you learn at that moment how to praise God, you get the attention of heaven. And all of a sudden, God shows up because praise brings God and God brings power. Shout right there. Praise brings God and God brings power. So when I praise, whatever's happening has to stop. God tells us that when he does show up, he sets us free, he delivers us, he blesses us, he brings us to a place where now we can have the desires of our heart because of what he said. What does praise, what things does God bring with us? Psalms 149, 3 and 4 says this, 
Let them praise his name and dance. Psalms 149, 3 and 4. Let them sing praises unto him with the temple and the harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. He will beautify the meek. When you praise him with a temple and a dance, we've got to the point we don't even dance for God anymore without knowing why we're dancing. But when you praise him with a temple and a dance and an instrument, God says, I will show up and I will glorify or satisfy the meek with salvation. That word meek is really, I will come along and get the afflicted. When you praise all your afflictions, I will send the benefits of your salvation to resolve. Oh, I just got somebody. If you're sitting in your house right now, I don't care who you are. If you started praising directly about the affliction that you have, there's nothing that anybody, there's nothing that will stop God from coming fast. Nothing will make God come faster than you praising and watch Him heal you. He'll give us the benefits. That's why the psalmist said in Psalms 103, he said, this is when he got to the point where he understood the power of praise. Quit just saying stuff. Quit just saying stuff. You sitting here watching this. Quit just being that. Be who God told you to be. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Make some real changes. Quit worrying about geography or who's around you and making sure you're in the right protocol. All you got to do is open your mouth and your heart at the right moment like the psalmist did. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is my innermost being, bless him and forget not all his benefits. Why would the psalmist say forget not all his benefits after he said bless the Lord? Because we bless frivolously. Let me show you what we've done. When I told you that we've taken the church, it's gotten so bad, we got to beg people in church to praise. Yes, we do. The average person comes to church and will say, praise the Lord. Will y'all please stand for praise and worship? Uh, will you please begin to worship God? Some people don't worship unless they're hurting. Some people have come and assigned other people to worship him. So you don't worship him. You just live vicariously by somebody else's worship and just count it as yours. And you're missing God. And all of a sudden we sit there. And this is how we do. I got this chair to demonstrate. Watch this. I got, I got to take this back for me. So what we do, we sit in church. And praise and worship is going on. And we sit. And we're watching as if we just entered into a concert and we sit there and maybe as the praise is going on, you know, we maybe look at our phone and then we sit back and we do one of these numbers or we do everything. Wait a minute. Praise to God. Heaven is opening up. You're sitting in church selfishly, inwardly or whatever way you're doing it. You're sitting there acting like you don't realize that nothing's coming your way until you open your mouth. That's not worship, just sitting in church. Listen to me. Somebody said, uh, Pastor, well, you know, and I'm not talking about jumping all around. No, no, no. Sometimes there is a silent praise. You know what a silent praise is? Somebody said, well, how can silent praise be bringing noise? A silent praise is when I'm sitting there and my motive, everything in me is attentive to God. I ain't thinking about the phone. I ain't thinking about what I'm cooking for dinner. I'm not thinking about what's on. I'm only focusing in on God. That's a silent praise, and God will honor that. Somebody said, well, you know, uh, uh, I'm older now. Okay, so you're older. So that means that God calls the young because they're strong. He calls the old because they know the way. There is a 20 year old praise, there is a 30 year old praise, there is a 40 year old praise, there's a 50 year old praise, and a 60 year old praise, and 70, 80, 90 year old praise. But listen to me, nowhere in the Word of God is there no praise. So when you decide that you're not going to praise God because you don't feel like it, then you just miss the very thing that you came to church for. So some people said, well, I, I can't praise God because I'm sick, because you're old. Here's what I'm saying. When you're old, I know when I was growing up in church my whole time, the old folk used to say this, if you can't do nothing, wave your hand. All I'm saying is there's too many people not in the worship. If you can't do nothing, wave your hand, wave it. And somebody said, well, I'm too sick to be shot. Well, if you can't shout, run. And, 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 and he said, well, I don't feel good. Then uh, all I can do is, is sit down and wave, move something. Move both your hands. You might do like this. <laughs> this may sound silly, but just do this, God. Your blessing. Because there's a time in life when you're going to have to fight. Some of us. 
and learn. We don't care how bad we feel. We don't care what's going on in our life. We have come to fight. So maybe every day that you don't feel good, you may have to give the sacrifice. Come with the chair. You may have to say, Devil, you know what? I went to the grocery store and I was moving. And I had arthritis and I was hurt. But you know what? Think. I'm getting ready to fight back. I'm getting out the chair. I'm, I'm getting out of bed. I'm lifting my hands and I'm going to fight back. Some days, anything you're going to get from God, you got to fight for it. And that fight has to start with your understanding of how precious it is that you can worship and praise God. I should have had on my lapel neck today because I feel like fighting with these gloves. Let me move this out of the way. So, what am I talking about? In this text, Joshua is going to teach us what a real praise fighter does. He don't care if it's offering. He don't care if it's if whatever it is. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all this with me. Bless his holy name. And they begin to praise through the whole service. They praise through the offering, knowing that if God hadn't given me something in my pocket, I wouldn't have none. Some of y'all need to praise just the fact that you got something when you know you shouldn't have anything. And because of that, when you praise, God said, I'll give it to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. God said, I will bless you for praising him. So God promised that if you fight, if you learn to praise fight, the victory is in the fact that the forces of evil can't stop you. Let's look. Three things I'm going to teach you from this text. Joshua is going to teach us that it's not just playing around praise. It's an organized praise. You better get this. It is an organized praise orchestrated by God, brought down in our spirit, that when I yell it out, man, demons start flying. Watch this. Three things. Praise God for making a way out. Praise God by following his way out. Praise God for making a way out. Praise God for following his ways out. And praise God for follow through and celebration. I'll say it again. Praise God for making a way out. That should make you happy because you're sitting here now because God made a way out. Don't tell him. God made a way that you didn't know he was making. Praise God for you having enough sense to follow the way out that he made. <laughs> Sometimes he had to push you, but you made it out. And praise God that you will follow through so you can get to celebrating him for his way out. First part of this text says, I'm going to show you where we are. Praise God for making a way out. The Bible says that Jericho was straightly shut up. Go to verse 1. Because the children of Israel, none went in, none went out. You heard the story of Jericho. Uh, we learned it in Sunday school. If you weren't in school, you learned it anyway. And we all know that the Israelites marched around the wall six times. Uh, one time, six days, and then on the seventh day, they marched seven times, and on the seventh time, they all shouted, and the walls came falling down. And when I was younger, and since Sunday school, when the walls fall down, our Sunday school teacher had a little thing we did, and said, the walls came down, we go, yay! But there is so much more to the praise you have in God than just the walls falling. Look at the obstacle. Jericho is representative of what you're facing right now. There's a Jericho in your life. There's a Jericho in the well-being of one of your children. There's a Jericho in that health issue you have. How am I going to get through it? There's a Jericho in your financial situation. You're trying to, you know, you're trying to act like something that you don't have and you're trusting God every day, but the stress is killing you over you. There's a Jericho in the instability in your marriage and relationship. You're wondering, when is my turn? When is this going to turn around? What happened to the joy of my marriage? There's a Jericho in your mind that there's a place where you're saying, I don't know what it is. Jericho can only be moved by praise. Any obstacle you have can only be moved by praise. David went out with confidence and praised God when everybody else wouldn't. That's what he did. He told the giant, I'm going to feed you your head to the birds of the field, birds of the air and the fowls of the field, and the, and the beasts of the field. What he told him was, I'm confident. I'm going to praise and trust God. Anybody you see God delivered, they set out a praise. A praise is just believing what God said and shouting it out in the face of my darkness. The woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch Somebody ought to shout that right now. Him and the 
everything's going to be alright. Anybody you can name, blind on the mess by the side of the road. Jesus, son of David, bring the noise. Praise for you, bring in that noise when the enemy says, shut up, and you don't know what to do. And that's what happened here. But look what this text says, very interesting. Now the Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. No one out, no one in. Jericho, the walls themselves are about 10 stories. I, I found out the archaeological, archaeological diggings has proved that in some places the walls were 11 feet thick. Some places they were only 4 feet thick. It was a three-tier building, and all the way to the top, it was about 59, 60 feet in the air and 430,000 feet in circumference. This is what they marched around every day because they were not going to stop. They followed God's plan. But it's funny. You need to understand that your praise does not bring the victory. Your praise just secures what is already yours. That's an important point. I'm not praising for God to show up. I'm praising to get what he already left. That's right. Put that in the chat. That's good. I'm praising to get what God already left. When I start praising, it's not for God to fix this now. It's for God to show up. And get it, because God says that he had already given Jericho into the hand. But it's funny. We are sitting around being scared of something that God said was already yours. Look what the text says. They were, Jericho was shut up because of children of Israel. We're afraid of some stuff, and it's already afraid of us. No, it's afraid of it. It's afraid. The enemy is afraid. Your situation is afraid that you're going to call on God. You're in, love you just to sit there and whine, sit there and be upset, sit there and lose your mind, sit there and take your medication, but don't worship. He wants you to do all of that. But he said, oh, I can just keep them so they don't worship God. Let's figure out where we are. The children of Israel had come through the Red Sea, left Egypt. God delivered them. Watch what happened. As God took them through the Red Sea, he took them through the Red Sea, kind of cleansed them to drown everything they had in Egypt. He drowned it. As a matter of fact, Pharaoh drowned in the Red Sea. And then the children got on the other side. But when they got on the other side, they were not obedient to God. They didn't do what God said to do. But the Bible tells us in the first verse of the fifth chapter, watch this, it said, And it came to pass, all the kings of the Amorites and all the kings of the Canaanites were scared. Their hearts melted because they heard how God dried up Jericho. Watch my God. He will repeat a miracle. He gave a miracle to Joshua at that moment because Joshua needed it. I'm trying to get this out. If you need what God has done, he will do a miracle to make your enemy run away from you. And that's what's going on right now. The enemy was so afraid of Joshua that they melted. The enemy was afraid. While you're sitting around doubting and fretting the enemy and really hoping nothing happened, that devil's saying, please don't call on God. Uh, don't, don't call on God like Moses did. No, don't call on God like Noah did. Don't call on God like Abraham did. He don't want you to call on God like you once did because he wants you to sit there and keep your mouth shut. And what the devil does if he can't stop you, the first thing the devil will do, write this down, will distract you. You know in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, Mary and Martha, you know the story. We felt sorry for Martha in that story a little bit because in the story it says Martha invited Jesus and the travelers into her house. And it says when they got in the house, Mary sat down at the feet of Jesus and Martha was running around cooking and getting stuff ready and doing this. And for a while I said, that's not right that Martha's doing it. And then Martha said, what we were thinking, said, Jesus, will you please tell my sister that it's not right that she lets me do all the work? Tell her to come help me. And Jesus said something strange. She has chosen that good part. She has chosen the better part. She has chosen, here's what he said, the one thing needed for life. Notice she chosen them to worship God. Now, he was not saying it's bad to cook and it's bad to clean. He said, no, I'm trying to show you and symbolize Mary and Martha as two types of Christians that one will get delivered and one will not get delivered because when it's time to worship, you'll be so full of care and worry and running around that you forgot that it's time for Jesus. Listen to me. It wasn't about the cooking. Yeah, God wants you to clean and cook. But what he's saying is he used that moment to teach us something. Don't get so distracted with the troubles of this world that you forget to do what Mary was doing and not sit at our feet and get that worship. 
And so he was trying to show us, you're that Christian that's all worried because you never praise. Worship is a part of praise. Praise is a combination of my walk and my worship and getting together with God. And Mary sat there and she got together. So when the devil can't distract you like that, you know what he does then? He deceives you. He told David, you know, David didn't go away when it was time for war. You know, the text, text Samuel. And David didn't go away. And all of a sudden we find out, text Samuel, we find out that David was on the roof watching Bathsheba. And it says he should have been in war. What does war mean? Should have been fighting somewhere. But instead the devil deceived him in his flesh. And he slept with Bathsheba. And he got so deceived because the devil thought he was going to knock him out. But don't, don't just talk about David. Most of us have been deceived our own self. But we found out that David was deceived. And what the devil didn't count on was God was going to forgive him. Somebody thank God for, for mercy. And grace. Somebody thank God for forgiving them. Because there was a time we thought what we were doing was right. My flesh deceived me. Thank you, Pastor. Somebody speak up. I wasn't the only one out there doing this stuff and thought I was doing right. Because we know that we were deceived. And the devil can't deceive us, then he tries to destroy us. I just answer somebody's question saying, Well, why is all this mess going on in my life? Because the devil is right now saying, I can't stop you, and I'm trying to destroy you. But here is the good news. I want you to give yourself a praise right here. He hasn't stopped you yet. He hasn't stopped you yet because there's a God on your side. Man, I can stay here right here. He hasn't stopped you yet because God has always made a way for you to get delivered. I know you're crying now. I know you're down now. But you better hear these words. He hasn't stopped you yet. I dare you to say your own self. God, the devil hasn't stopped me yet. Yep, I had some lows. I had some deep, deep, deep valleys. But he hasn't stopped me yet because God is on my side. But we praise God for making a way. We become a praiser because of what God did. And then we praise Him for making a way because He prepares us for the fight. The next thing we will see is that because God opened the Red Sea, He opened up the Jericho, He said, you've been in the, in the wilderness, children of Israel, for 40 years. In those 40 years, some of you died because you were disobedient. But the ones of you that are left, it's time for you to rededicate so you can be ready for the battle that's about to come. Did you hear what I said? Maybe the sickness you're going through, maybe the struggle you're going through, not maybe, if God allows you to go through it, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, it's just preparation for the battle you're going through so you can get the victory. Praise God. It's just preparation. You ought to tell you something. It's just preparation. I don't know what's going to come out of this, but it's just preparation. I felt somebody through. I felt somebody say it's just preparation for what I got to go through, and I'm getting ready to come out on the other side because I'm going to learn how to fight with my praise. So you know what he did? He made him get circumcised. Pain. He made him get pain. What that's showing is none of us can survive now off of last week's praise. Mm -hmm. Some of you right now, you're mad because you want to always sit around in your mind and talk about what you did in 2005. 2005, I stayed in the Word. We was out there in the streets doing evangelism, and I was praying every day, and I got on my knees, and I know the principles of God. Yeah, but you stop. You can't live off of old stuff. God said, all of us need to be renewed. We need to have a renewal so we can be prepared for the battle. So we never get circumcised. And then we praise God, second point by following his way out. Look what it said in verse 4. Now, the seven priests shall bear the ark, seven trumpets. So, here's the first thing you need to understand how we follow God's ways out. It's a setup. The verse is set up because the sevens are a setup. The number seven in the Bible is God's anointed number of completion, it's God's anointed number of identifying with his power. God created the earth in seven days. The seven is always talking about when God's going to complete something. So when God says there were seven priests and seven horns and they marked seven times on the seventh day, here's what God is telling them. He's trying to show you, I'm really setting you up for victory. Somebody ought to become a praise warrior right now because it's really a setup. God already told you he's going to give you the victory. And now he said, he said, it's a setup because I'm showing you, I'm preparing it. Seven means God completes what he's going to do. Can I bless somebody? God will complete what he's doing in your life. Shout now. God's going to bring it to pass. I don't know what you're waiting on. Shout now. I don't know what needs to come. Tell him now because God never stops. He said, I will complete that. The good work I've begun in you, I will complete it. God's going to complete it. That's a shout for somebody. God said, all you got to know is I set you up for the victory. You just got to continue to praise. 
You got to continue to fight when it looks like there's no way out. That's what God told him to do. Look at the, look at the strategy God said. Don't make any sense. He said, you're going to march around one time six days. Then you're going to march around seven times seventh day. And then you're going to shout when the horns are blown. Now watch this. There's a significance to God's sevens. Because the first thing is, um, God will perfect that if we can learn how to praise in good or bad. Um, there was a man who came out of the hospital because he had spinal surgery. So he had to be stuck home. And when he got a little better, he decided, I'm going to go out on my porch because my porch and get a little fresh air. But it was a little, little breezy out, a little cold. But he had a bird feeder out there and he would fill the bird feeder up. And he noticed in this brisk, cold weather, a bird came along singing as it ate out the bird feeder. And the man was kind of mad saying, I don't know what you singing in this weather for. But then the next day, went back out on the porch, took him a blanket, but it was a little warmer out. Threw the blanket aside, filled up the bird feeder. Here comes the bird again. This time when the bird came, it was whispering again, ate the bird feeder. And the man said, yeah, you, you need to be whisk, whisk, you need to be singing uh, uh, as good a day as this is. And then the man was going to go in the house and it dawned on him. This bird sang in the cold weather, sang in the warm weather, and the bird was not singing because it was warm or cold. He was singing because the man was providing. Oh, come on, don't miss this. God said, you don't praise me because it's dark or because it's light. He said, your praise should come because every time you come to that bird feeder, I got something to give you. How many of you know every time I ask, I don't know when, he may not come with no money, but he shows up. You need to praise God for making, for following his way out because God always makes sure the provision is there. The seven ram's horns they were carrying were called so fars. They were used for feast. They were used in the temple. But what God is going to set He's letting them know the same instruments used for praise is the ones you're going to use for war. <laughs> That's praise fighting. The same thing you use for, for war, for praise you use for war. Same thing you use for a feast you use for war. Use your praise. Well, look at the organization. He had the army, then the seven priests, we're after the army praising with the trumpets. And then the Ark of the Covenant. And then another army, a re reward. And then the people. And they march. Now watch the significance of the praise. And then they march. But the Bible tells us here is bringing the noise. They did not wait until the seventh day to stop making noise. It's true. The misconception is that they walked around silently on those six days. They did it with their mouth. God said, don't open your mouth. But if you go to verse 89 of our text, you'll find out what scared the enemy is that the horns, the whole six days were playing as they marched around. Do you, you don't think that scared the enemy? When you are down and you're still walking around to the God is hating. This is the day. This, I make them sick that the Lord has made. Are you sitting there talking about, yeah, everything will be all right. And the devil said, I'm squeezing you hard as I can. But you steady bringing the noise. Steady looking up to God. Steady fighting with your praise. Because it says here, it messed me up when I saw that, that, that you're fighting the devil. Sometimes, you know, as I said, you can be still and be fighting the devil. But the devil is mad when you can bring praise when he thinks he got you. Come on, we're going to close this. Watch this. Follow this. So we look down there, and it just repeats the format of what happened because God wants us to see the command that he did. He said, I'm going to command you to shout. That's when the praise fighting starts. So the last thing is we don't praise God just for making a way out. We don't praise God just for following. We praise God for the follow-through and the celebration. Verse 20. So the people, when they heard the blast of the trumpet, you got the, you got the, you got the order, right? They marched around one day. Six days, one time. Then on the seventh day, on the seventh time around, they were ordered to blow and blast the sofars. And at that time, all the people were to shout and let the walls fall down. Here's what I need you to know. Great story, great to do. But some people will never get their blessing. Some of you have missed your blessing because the things God tells us to do sometimes just doesn't make any sense. I can hear somebody on that third day they were walking around saying, this don't make no sense. Walking all the way around that building and I ain't going out tomorrow. Maybe the fourth day you missed and the fifth day you missed. I don't know. But all I'm saying is some of you
you and miss it because you won't follow through what God said do. You want to bless him, but you don't want to follow through. You want to do what you want to do, but you want God to still bless you. And God said the blessing comes from when you follow through. It's good we see it in the story, but when we have marked those six days, getting up early in the morning, getting in line, you know how long it probably took to get the parade started? It's like, I ain't going out there tomorrow. People play around. All kinds of excuses. But they kept marching. And the text tells us, when they got to that seventh, and the, he blew that horn, all the people shouted, and the walls came falling down. Real worship is a war. You got to learn that my God has been so good that I can't stop praising Him because I can't see the way. He'll make a way. You got to learn. That I can praise God in good or bad. You gotta learn that I am a praise fighter. You gotta learn that as soon as darkness comes on the inside of your mind, something else say, praise fight. Devil, you look you at me, but I'm getting ready to shout to the chains break, to the wall. Praise him by make sure make sure you follow the way he made. And then when you get to it, celebrate and worship. Watch the walls fall down. The rest of the text said they had the gold and the silver they put in God's tray. The other place was cursed. Any place that tried to hold you is cursed because of who you are in God. This Pastor Duncan saying, Praise God! As soon as I said, some of y'all need to practice. Just jump up and start worshiping God. Remember what I said? If you can't do it but wait, just wait. Praise God! Soon as the devil gets you, praise God! And you tell yourself, I am the praise fighter. God bless you. Have a great day. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down, but with a no way up, and I needed some help. Everybody. Breathing but not living, just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free